has already, uh, already introduced me. My name is Kaurelo Chilwani, and the work that I'm going to present to you is the work that we do as, at, at ESCOM, looking at the impacts of weather and climate variabilities to the business. So this is a team effort. That's one thing I need to point out from the beginning. And I also need to emphasize the fact that um, this is solely focusing on adaptation and um, not mitigation. Because um, as most of us in the room might, have, might expect me to touch a lot on mitigation, because we all are aware that ESCOM is the number one greenhouse gas emitter in the country or in, even in the continent. So, but my presentation is solely focusing on the adaptation work that we do as research. So I'll take you through the overview. I'll talk about um, the climate change strategy that we have as ESCOM, which was um, uh, uh, developed in 2007, and then move on to the climate change adaptation strategy, which is the main focus of the presentation today, and also focus on the vulnerability and adaptation research projects that we're currently undertaking at ESCOM, and then move on to the case studies and a brief outline of um, the summary of findings that we're currently seeing and also focus on the, um, the conclusion in terms of where we're going from here. So I just thought um, as, as a way of start, I should first highlight the various impacts that we experience as a business. Um, as you can see on the slides, we do have a number of transmission and distribution line or infrastructure impacted by weather and climate um, uh, variabilities. The first one we see on the left, on your left hand side is the a uh, transmission line that's waterlogged due to heavy rainfalls, um, um, long, long, or prolonged rainfalls uh, over parts of the country. And then this was mainly around um, the high felt priority area. And then in the KwaZulu Natal, we normally experience flooding where we have our infrastructure flooded by, um, uh, due to heavy rainfalls as well. And we also have uh, incidences of snow that we also need to deal with. And in most instances whereby you have um, the substations um, covered with snow, you end up having um, to cut out electricity to some parts of the area that rely on that substation. So this is a major cost to us because um, in most instances you'll have issues such as the insurance claims from key customers that are normally cut out and the, that results in a number of economical um, impacts. So at the bottom we also have impacts that result from heavy um, uh, strong winds that are causing the clashing of conductors. And then as we all, um, some of us can be aware that um, the clashing of conductors <coughs> results in fires. And in some instances, you end up have a complete damage of your infrastructure. So all in all, all these impacts results in, our, in compromising our security of supply of electricity to the whole nation. So now I need to move on to the ESCOM climate change strategy. It's a strategy that was published in 2007, which focuses on six key areas that we need to focus on. And then as you can see, the main, most of them, they focus on mitigation. I'll go straight to the first one where we look into diversifying our energy mix. We do currently have the nuclear, as um, we, some of us may be aware. And we also have a couple of renewable energy projects that are currently underway, and as well as gas, um, gas uh, power generation uh, power stations, and we currently have two of them. And then I now want to move on to the energy efficiency. And then all of these are aimed at um, mainly reducing our greenhouse gas emissions as a business. So we currently have um, a number of energy efficient programs. And in this ones, we focus on reducing the energy demand in various parts of the country and especially buildings. And um, so far, we've um, registered a number of projects countrywide, and we work closely with a number of businesses, and they've um, bought into our idea of looking into reducing their energy demand, and this, is, this has been a success. And as ourselves, as a business as well, we've also looked into registering about two projects so far under the carbon financing. I'll just want to jump straight to the carbon financing project. And in this one, we've registered about two projects where we going to get credit, uh, generate credit through this project and make uh, revenue for the business. And then the third part is the adaptation part, which is the main focus of my talk. We do have um, ways in which we need to look at how we, imp we adapt as a business to the impact of weather, climate variability, including the long-term climate change. 
And the other ones, we also focus on innovation through research and development. We do have a number of research projects underway, and um, some of them include the solar thermal plant, the smart grids, which is a fairly new environment, and our team is still uh, trying to get their grips on it. We also have um, the one that's called underground gas, um, coal gasification, which is something that has been going on for a couple of years now, and we keep on revising and um, revive, uh, reviving the methodologies there. And then I'll skip the carbon financing, as I've already highlighted, um, one, two projects that have already been, been registered. And lastly, we also focus on advocacy, partnership, and collaboration. In this one, we have um, two of our ESCOM employees who are participating in the national and international um, uh, discussions around climate change. And they also form part of the COP discussions that we normally see happening annually uh, uh, throughout the world. So I now want to move on to the adaptation strategy. As we looked at um, the previous slide, point number three was talking to adaptation. So as a way of um, implementing that uh, aspect, we decided to come up with an adaptation strategy for ESCOM as a business. The main objective for us to come up with this, uh, the strategy was to improve ESCOM's current adaptive capacity as well as resilience to the adverse climate-related impacts. This also includes the long-term climate change. So the strategic initiatives that are captured in that um, strategy include fo focusing on establishing a center of excellence that will focus on climate change research, which is something that we already have and we've been doing uh, climate change research over a couple of years now. And this will focus on um, doing research around climate science, climate modeling, and which with the main focus on downscaling and also looking at the impact scenarios. And the next part, we need to also define ESCOM's adaptation baseline. This is where the case studies come in. And by developing the baseline, we need to first do a vulnerability assessment. So that's what we're doing in this case studies that I'm going to share with you. And then basically what the case studies do, we go around the business. Firstly, we identify parts of the business that we can focus on. But all in all, we want to focus all throughout the ESCOM uh, business, uh, business chain. So we focus on generation, which is our power stations. We focus on transmission as well as distribution. So in each of those, we identify areas that we need to go through, as we may all be aware that uh, we do have infrastructure throughout the country. So in those ones, we look at the thresholds of the systems that are vulnerable to the impacts of weather. And the key message that we I need to emphasize here is that as we go around talking to our colleagues within the business, we don't uh, talk much about the term climate change. Although when we introduce the studies, we talk about the climate change strategy that we have as a business. But when we bring it down to them, we say we're looking at the impacts of weather, historical impacts of weather that we've experienced in the past. So that way we easily get by it. So I must just go through them some of them quickly, but um, as you can all see, I'll share the, the presentation with all of you. I've only been allocated seven minutes. I think I'm almost done with the seven minutes. And um, these are the case studies, um, uh, the research projects that we have. We have a total of 10. They include um, the case study as well as um, modeling studies that uh, involve a number of institutions. We do have work with the CSIR, UCT, UKZN, as well as Northwest University. So I won't go into details of these projects, but they all inform the implementation of the adaptation strategy. So the case studies, I've already touched on them, and um, even the, the, the research work that we are currently undertaking. And the one thing that I need to point out here is that the case studies are undertaken in phases. We do have phase one, which involves the vulnerability assessment, and phase two, we do modeling work, uh, which is informed by the parameters that have been captured through our case, case studies. And briefly, the findings that we got, um, talking to the first slide that I showed, we do have impacts that are, uh, we've identified that are as a result of various weather parameters. So all in all, as you can see, the second bullet we do have, we are impacted by almost all the weather parameters as a business. So what we're doing now, we're doing thorough studies to understand which parts of the business are, info are, are, are vulnerable and then how best can we adapt. So these are mainly just the details of the results. And that some of the, of the results are from the modeling work that we do with the CSIR. It's information that uh, most of us in the room are is aware of, the projections of future um, changes in terms of various weather parameters. 
And the key point that I need to highlight there is that um, there will be a potential increase in the frequency of flash floods, damaging winds, and lightning. And in our case, those are, are likely going to res result in fires where we have our transmission and distribution lines burned down. So at the end of it all, we would like to define ESCOM's divisional adaptation baseline. By this, we mean, to, we mean that we need to define the baseline for generation, transmission, and distribution. And at the end of that, we need to also come up with adaptation action plans for each and every division. But at the end of the day, we need to have an adaptation plan for the entire business. And um, third, the third part that we're also looking at, we need to develop an adaptation cost curve for ESCOM, which is something that we're still trying to figure out how to, be, how to do it. But we're currently talking to the CSR to see if they can assist there. And um, lastly, we need to also do impact scenario studies. Because at the end of the modeling work that um, the CSR is, is going to do for us, we will be able to understand um, uh, that um, the future changes at various areas that we are interested in. And in, in that, we need to take that information and translate it into um, impact for the business to easily understand and see if they can't use that uh, when implementing and planning or designing their infrastructure. So in conclusion, um, I would like to, uh, to outline that current um, ESCOM infrastructural design and specification is mainly informed by historical weather information, which is key, but um, from now on, given the trends that we've um, experienced in terms of weather and the impact, the associated impacts, the business now feels that we need to look at uh, designing for the future, meaning that we need to take into account the future projections when we design our infrastructure. And also there's a need to demonstrate the how ESCOM uses the research findings, um, these I've already touched on. And um, in, con in, in continuation to that, we need to do an impact um, scenario studies that we need, to, uh, that we will be informed by the research findings, findings from the modeling work. So all in all, ESCOM's infrastructure is vulnerable to the negative impacts of weather, climate variability, and the long-term climate change. And therefore, we need to adapt as a business and all of this is impacting on our strategic objectives to keep the lights on, meaning that it compromises our security of um, electricity supply. That's basically it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention.